Hello, everybody. How you doing? That was like the first word I've said out loud today. <clears throat> and I had no idea that my voice was so morning voice. Do you guys have morning voice? I have morning voice. Um, so, today we are doing Teatro Grotesco from um, Thomas Ligotti. Um, and the story we're doing today is, uh, why do I keep doing this? My case for retributive, retributive action. Um, and this is in, we're starting the second part of this book, which is called Deformations. Derangements was the first part. This is Deformations, and we have three stories in here, and then we're going to go into the damaged and the diseased. Um, this book is becoming my favorite short story collection. Like, um, the more I read it, um, it's just, it's, oh, I just love it. And I love the way Ligotti writes. Um, and it's so funny. I'm going to give, um, Grim Scribe and, uh, Songs of the Dead Dreamer, um, another go, and in the Discord chat, which again, the link is down below if you want to jump in on that, um, the music and books he wrote along with, um, I want to say the band's called Current 95, I'm not 100% certain on that, um, that's been getting some chat in the chat so I gotta check that stuff out too um <clears throat> but anyway so the story today is it's an odd one and it's really good and I feel like this part of the book um is dealing with mental health a lot more than um, other parts of the book have. And I'm sure if you've been reading along, you're like, well, Mr. Paperback Junkie, um, to be honest, uh, all the stories we've read so far, it sounds like somebody's fucking crazy. So this has a different take on it. Those stories were very internal in this story is much more external. And um, I want to even say that it's more about like the medical system we have and things of that nature. So um, I'm going to give you bits of a rundown and then I'm going to spoil the ending for you because it is a short story and that's what we're doing here. <clears throat> but basically, um, it starts off with this guy who um, has been seeing this doctor, and the doctor has him on medication, and then the doctor sends him across the border. And the term across the border is... Uh, trying to think of the best way to put this I think it's telling I'll just say um, so across the border he goes and um, starts his first day at work processing forms and um, he's doing it for the Quine organization um, Q org and the thought of going to a place where you're totally understaffed, working indeterminate hours, um, processing forms, like, to me, this could be just how normal humans live um, day to day. Which is, if you know anything about me, 
something that I've um, had very a very hard time with my entire life. Um, like my family doesn't um, really accept me if I'm not suit and tie nine to five guy. And, um, I've never understood it. Like it's never made any sense to me. Like even when I was a small child, um, my stepdad would come home from work after being gone since before I woke up. Um, and he gets home in time to have dinner, watch the news and whatever, whatever primetime shows are on for the next two hours. And then he goes to bed and does the same thing the next day. And um, I've never understood it. I've never, it's never made any sense to me. Um, and there's a part of me that wants to say, just watching him every day probably shaped me more than anything in my life. And, um, <clears throat> to be honest, like, I'm, I haven't even thought about this right now. I'm just like spewing at you and now you're taking it. Um, I've never thought about it like that before. Cause, um, he was not a talker and he was not a, um, cuddler, you know, he was not, anything other than the provider and um we weren't allowed to talk when the tv was on um and if you did you got one of the before he went back to watch tv you know what i'm saying so um just observing him made me realize, like, that's not life. That's not what I want. Um, like, I appreciate what he did, you know, but that's not me, you know. So anyway, back to the story. Fucking my therapist. Um... He goes there to work, and everyone there <clears throat> is a part of the Q-Org. And we find out that all the doctors on the other side of the border work for Q-Org. And Q-Org, um, they're like a huge monopoly, and they run the pharmaceutical um business in the world they run the doctors they run everything and they always send their patients across the border to do their work and everyone in this weird little town that's like covered in this fog which is a great um comparison to just like how you feel when you're being medicated for mental illness and stuff. Um, everybody's a part of it. And this guy doesn't know how long he's supposed to work every day. He doesn't, he just keeps filling out forms and pro or not filling them out, but processing forms, processing folders, doing this until he feels like it's time for him to leave. Like he has no fucking idea what he's doing. And so, he is hearing shit from different people in the office. And so he hears this story about the Nobby monster. And um, then hears this story about this guy who he replaced, I guess, who kind of went crazy at work and um, got thrown out and then disappeared. Around the same time, the Nobby monster showed up, which was like this, like, pale giant spider thing that had what looked like a human head on its back and um a lot of people had seen it and reported it but because all of these people were on medication their reports were um 
unfounded or not truthful, but everyone in the town was on shit. So, like, you can't really say, um, this person's right and this person's wrong, if that makes any sense. So, um, the story goes on, and then, um, to <clears throat> just cut to the chase, he finds the Nobby monster and like has this knife and he's going to go up to it. And the Nobby monster just sits there and then leans its head back. Like he knows what this guy's going to do to him. And, um, he kills the Nobby monster and, um, the Nobby monster is obviously the guy who got thrown out of the office and um, there's a bunch of stuff about him that I'm not getting into because I want you to read the story if you haven't read it yet. So the story ends with um, him getting the venom from the Nobby monster and going back to his doctor on the other side of the border. And he had injected the doctor with the venom and he was waiting for the mutation to begin. And, um, then he was going to do himself in with all of the drugs that the doctor had in his office. Um, so that's the story, but the idea of Q org and all of this stuff, um, it comes up again in the book, but, um, it's just one of these, weird allegories for society and our um, healthcare system and everything. And it just makes you, it just makes you feel, you know? Um, I don't know if I shared this before. Um, I don't know if I should share it, but I'm all right. I already started, but, um, my psychiatrist, the dude who prescribes my meds, um, when all of the death was going on last year, died. And um, I felt weird about it. Um, and everyone was talking to me, like people who found out and knew about it. They were like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And, da, 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 da. and I wasn't like, I, at first I was like, why are people asking me if I'm okay? Like, it's not like we were friends. It's not like we went drinking together, you know? He was just the dude that gave me my pills. But then the more I thought about it, I was angry because I'm like, he's a doctor, how the fuck does he go off and die? I'm trusting this fucking guy to put medication in me. And he let himself die? Are you fucking with me right now? Um, and I was really just upset about the whole thing. And then, like, I realized, well, he's a psychiatrist. He's not a fucking doctor of blankety blank. So of course, like he might actually die. Um, but it's just weird, you know, um, everything's strange. Everything's bizarre. The world is a very weird place right now. Um, and I feel like I need to stop taking things so personal. Listen to me, like being all like, um, introspective from reading a weird horror story, you know, I, this, I fucking love this book, dude. Um, so anyway, I hope you're enjoying, um, the book so far and, um, tomorrow. Oh no, I don't have my, ah, I don't have my shit. My book that tells me everything. Oh, actually, I could just pull this up real quick. Let me pull this up real quick, and I'll tell you what we're doing tomorrow. So tomorrow, we are doing 
Repression, Suffering 1, Suffering 2, and Ecocide. Out of um, Conspiracy Against the Human Race. And then um, the day after, we're doing our temporary supervisor, which is a great story, out of this. So, yeah. And um, sometime this week, I'm going to be posting um, what the next um, group reads are. Um, that we're going to be doing. So, um, next month we're doing Lords of Chaos. Um, and don't watch the movie. Please, for the love of fucking God, don't watch the movie until after we do the read-along. Um, and, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just do a video about all that stuff later. So, um, until tomorrow, guys, take care. I'm trying to stop this video and it's not.